All right, this lesson from section 3.3 .3 is on complex numbers. Um, and let's first start with some definitions. So the first thing we want to define is the square root of negative 1. And by definition, we are going to call that i. So the square root of negative 1 is i. The second thing that we're going to use as a, as a definition is the definition of i squared. So if we think of squaring i, well, i is really the square root of negative 1. But if I'm going to square it, it looks like that. And then squaring uh, negates the square root. It's like doing and undoing a function. And so I'm just left with negative 1. We're going to use these two things throughout the whole semester. So these are good to commit to memory, that the square root of 1 is i and i squared is negative 1. Alright, so let's talk about what makes a complex number. So we have the form a plus bi, and we say that the a part is the real number part, and we say that the bi part, that's the imaginary number part. So let's see what an example might look like. So if I've got 2 plus 3i, this one's not in your notes, then I would say that the real part is 2, and the imaginary part is 3i. I could also say that it, a is 2, because a is the real part, and then b is 3. Does that make sense? Let's do another example. So let's have another one here. 3i, that's on your paper. Well, I can rewrite that as 0 plus 3i, because that hasn't changed. Um, that hasn't changed anything at all. So that means that 0 is the real part, and 3i is the imaginary part. Let's do another example. 2 minus 4i all over 7. So I can actually break this apart into two separate fractions. I can say I've got 2 over 7 minus 4 over 7i. So then the real part would be the 2 over 7. The imaginary part would be the negative 4 over 7i. Let's do another example. When I have the number 2, well, there's no i there, so it's definitely not the imaginary part. So I could think of that as 0, or I'm sorry, 2 plus 0i. So then the real part is 2, and the imaginary part is 0i. Alright, so let's do a little simplifying then. Um, here's an example. We've got the square root of negative 10, and we want to multiply that by the square root of negative 10. So I can think of that as the square root of negative 10 squared, because I'm multiplying something by itself, and then that turns out to be negative 10. Let's do another example. Here we got the square root of negative 10, and we want to multiply that by the square root of negative 2. So I can think of this as a couple, uh, as kind of a different way. So I'm going to think of this square root of negative 10. Well, I'm going to think of that as the square root of negative 1 times 10. All that's under the radical there. And then I'm going to think of the square root of negative 2 the same way, as the square root of negative 1 times 2. And then I'm just going to work downwards here. So I can take these two things under the radical, and I can separate them into two separate things. I can take these two things under the radical and separate those as two separate radicals. And so you know by definition the square root of negative 1 is i. We'll just keep that square root of 10 right now. Square root of negative 1, there's also an i. And we'll keep that square root of 2 right now. So if I have i times i, 
Well, that's the same as i squared. And then let's bring the square root of 10 and the square root of 2 together. And I can write those under the same radical, 10 times 2. Oops, a multiplication. And so the uh, i squared now is negative 1. And then I can write this radical, 10 times 2 is 20. Yeah, I'm running out of room. Let's move over here now. So I can simply say that this is negative square root of 20. So that's kind of the long way, but I wanted to demonstrate how that works. Um, so that's how we simplify that. Let's do an adding and subtracting problem. That over here so you can see. I think that's in the screen. Okay, so let's add. Let's change different. Let's change color. So let's add a couple numbers. So we want to add 2 plus 3i, and we want to add that to 4 minus i. So when we add and subtract complex numbers, what we do is we add the real parts, and then we add the imaginary parts together. So the real part of this one is 2, and oh, I forgot my plus in there, there we go. And the real part of that one is 4, so I have 2 plus 4, and I'm just going to put parentheses around it just to distinguish it as my real part. Okay. This is the real part. Now let's do our imaginary part. So I've got 3i here, so I'm just going to concentrate on... Um, here, I'll just write the 3i. So the 3i, and I want to add a negative i. And let's put parentheses around that just to show that that's the imaginary part. The imaginary part. Okay. So let's simplify. 2 plus 4 is 6. Well, if I have 3 i's and I subtract 1 i, that's going to be 2 i. So when I add complex numbers together, I add the real parts together, I add the imaginary parts together, and that's what I get right there. Let's do one more example, and let's subtract these. Same problem, but now we're going to subtract it. So I have 2 plus 3i, and I want to subtract 4 minus or minus i. Well, the easiest way to do this is to change this to an addition problem. So to change this to an addition problem, we make this plus, and then we change the sign of everything in there. So let's rewrite that. 2 plus 3i plus negative 4 plus i. So now I can add the real parts. 2 and negative 4 are my real parts. So I have 2 plus negative 4. And now let's add the imaginary parts. 3i and 1i. So I have a 3i plus a 1i. So when I add the real parts, 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. And when I add the imaginary parts, 3i plus 1i is 4i. And so that's how I subtract complex numbers. So this is the end of the first lesson.